Why do Christians suffer? We're going to discuss some practical suggestions with you today. So you must remember that the key to blessing is not the suffering itself, but suffering in the right attitude. There are some additional suggestions that uh, therefore we may make to help you when you are in trials. These suggestions will help you to be an even keel type of a Christian, even though you are passing through adverse circumstances. So first of all, renew your confidence in God. Uh, You can renew your confidence in Him by reminding yourself of the very wonderful truths of the Word of God. Along with the Apostle Paul, you should be able to say, We know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them that are his called according to his purpose. So remember also that there are many afflictions for the believer, but God will deliver. Psalm 34, 19 assures us of that. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. So as mentioned previously, the word deliver not only means uh, that it rescue, but rather to arm you and to equip you. The Lord will give you the strength uh, to bear up under the trial, no matter how difficult the testing. God will make a way out which will enable you to bear it. So renew your confidence in God by reminding yourself of His wonderful faithfulness. Take, for instance, Lamentation 3, 22 and 23, where it says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So bask yourself in God's faithfulness. He will not test you beyond that you are able to bear. He will make a way that you can bear it. Why? Because he is faithful to you. So renew your confidence in God, as Isaiah says in 41.13, For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Notice also verse 3 and 4 of the 26th chapter. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. So trust ye in the Lord for ever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. So verse 3 assures us of God's peace, and verse 4 assures us of his strength. The word of God provides comfort when it says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He will never suffer the righteous to be moved. Reminding yourself constantly of the promises like these will renew your confidence in God. You will also be encouraged as you see how others have trusted the Lord in times of adversity. Take, for instance, Job. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Uh, In him, he says, Job's unshakable confidence in God will encourage you to have the same confidence. Now, your confidence in God will be renewed as you see that he has promised victory over circumstances. Again, Isaiah says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. So remind yourself of this verse as you pass through the waters of sorrow and the rivers of danger and the fires of testing. It will renew your confidence in God. Well, after you have renewed your confidence in God and have established yourself in Him, you should pray earnestly, definitely, and believingly. Luke 18, 1 says, Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Psalm 50, 15 records, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. God delivers us in the sense that he enables us to be able to stand under uh, our testings. We also see the power of prayer and the goodness of God in Psalm 34. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all of my fears. They looked uh, unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped around about them that fear him, and delivered them. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Trust the Lord. So place your trust in him, your confidence in him, 
and you will find His grace sufficient for every one of your needs. Now another practical suggestion concerning suffering is to count your blessings. For the Christian, suffering ends in blessing. When your eyes are fixed on the blessing instead of upon the suffering, you will find great encouragement. Now one of the blessings that results from suffering is the power of endurance. Take, for instance, James 1, verse 2 to 4. Reckon it nothing but joy, my brethren, whenever you find yourself surrounded by various temptations. Be assured that the testing of your faith leads to power of endurance. Only let your endurance do its full work, so that you may become perfect and complete, deficient in nothing. Then the Scriptures also tell us that trials or tribulations work patience. Paul said, We glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation work with patience. So when you adopt the same attitude that the Apostle Paul had, you will find much strength in the midst of suffering. Tribulation works patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given to us. Are these things realities in your life? Well, this is the purpose of suffering. These qualities are the blessings which result from suffering. The psalmist records many blessings uh, that are found in affliction. And he says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. This is from Psalm 119. I have other verses from that same psalm. He then counts his blessings by saying, It is good for me to have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Or again, I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. The psalmist saw the purpose of affliction. His own experience taught him that the judgments of the Lord are right. You also will find this to be true as you take time in the Word of God to see all of the blessings you may have as a result of suffering. Then the book of Job also tells us of the blessings which result from suffering. Eliphaz said, Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty, for he maketh sore, and he bindeth up, he woundeth, and his hands make whole. Notice well, the twofold action. God permits suffering, but he binds up, and he makes whole again. No wonder Job could say, When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. 23rd chapter and 10th verse. Another thing you need to do in the midst of suffering is to saturate your mind and your heart with the word of God. The psalmist realized the importance of being saturated with the word of God, for he said, Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. In other words, the psalmist went to the word of God, and it encouraged him and gave him a new life. We who know the Lord Jesus Christ are alike sheep following a shepherd. When the shepherd is in the presence of the sheep, there is no want. Remember Psalm 23, 1. The psalmist referred to this by saying, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In fact, the entire 23rd Psalm emphasizes that the shepherd is in the midst of his sheep at all times. This is verified by the Lord Jesus himself in the promise in the New Testament. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Hebrews 13, 5. Because the Lord will never leave nor forsake the Christian, we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Perhaps you say, But my trials, I have cried and cried unto God, and he just will not answer me. However, on the basis of Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, you may be assured that Christ is there and knows completely what you are going through. In fact, his heart is pained with the suffering he has to allow you. But he knows what the end product will be. Therefore, he knows that it is worthwhile. The psalmist also emphasizes that since the Lord is with us, we need not fear men. 
he said, In God I will put my trust. I will not fear what the flesh will, can do unto me. The psalmist concludes his 56th psalm by saying, For thou wilt deliver my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? So because the Lord has saved us from hell, it is only normal to expect that the Lord will keep us from failing in this life also, if we just depend upon him. We want to be an example to the uh, people or, uh, before whom we walk. Well, we need to depend upon the Lord to keep us then from failing. Another suggestion concerning suffering is to practice praising the Lord when we are in the dark about suffering. But you say, that is so hard to do. That is true, but try it. Remember Paul and Silas, who were put in prison after they had been beaten? Their backs were no doubt so sore that they could not even lie down, plus their feet were placed in stocks. Yet we are told that at midnight they were praising God and singing hymns. Acts 16. They praised the Lord even though they were suffering. What was the result? Oh, at first a great earthquake shook the foundation of the prison, which opened all the doors of the prison and freed every prisoner from their bonds, and they could run. But even the prisoners could not, while well, they could have run away, apparently, uh, they were so attracted uh, by what they saw in Paul and Silas that they had a desire to know more about and did want to leave. They wanted to find out more about the God of Paul and Silas. Well, this teaches us that God has a purpose in our suffering. So we should uh, praise him, even though we, we may not understand the purpose. Paul and Silas experienced uh, what Job uh, described uh, when he said uh, in one of his uh, statements, who giveth songs in the night. We too can experience the same thing even in the midst of suffering. Now every Christian is commanded to rejoice forevermore. Pray without ceasing, he says in 1 Thessalonians 5. In other words, every time something comes up, we need to pray about it. It does not mean that we're going to be constantly talking or speaking um, prayers out loud but rather that we are praying incessantly uh, for about things as they arise in our heart. The next verse commands, And in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now the everything of this verse also includes afflictions and suffering. We can give thanks to God even for suffering, because we realize he is faithful and is accomplishing his purpose in our lives. So in the midst of suffering, it will be especially helpful if we forget ourselves and love and care for others. Uh, Galatians 6.2 says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. This we are to do while rejoicing in the Lord. Romans 12.15 emphasizes how we ought to identify ourselves with others. He says, Rejoice with them that rejoice. Weep with them that weep. In other words, Forget yourself and turn to others. We need to love others and encourage them in our trials. This is one of the reasons why God sends sufferings to us, that we might be able to comfort others. Second Corinthians 1, 4 and 5 say God is describing as the one who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort wherewith also we are comforted of God. So in our suffering, we must always submit ourselves totally to God for a life of victory. By inspiration, Paul uh, spoke uh, to all the Christians when he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living, a holy, living sacrifice unto God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, God wants us to be living sacrifices for him. No matter how much the suffering, God will make a way of escape that we might be able to bear it. We see God's love in all of this. So who shall separate us from God's love? Thank you for listening to Back to the Bible. Join us again tomorrow. God bless you.